And then I met Anthony. I met, yes, yes. <laughs> I met um, I had uh, started going out to clubs because remember, I was only in my 20s. I was 26, 26, right. between 26 and 27. So I was going to clubs and hanging out with friends and just living my best life. And so yes. on this particular night, <laughs> um, I was going out with a friend and we had gone to a comedy shop. And this is kind of funny. I haven't told this. We had gone to a comedy club and Jamie Foxx was the uh, comic at that show. And after oh, the okay. show, um, I told my friend, let's just go and go to a club. But she had to go home because she had a babysitter. She, her babysitter mm -hmm. was leaving. And I didn't want to go home because I had a date that night earlier that had stood me up. And I was like, okay. I'm not going to go home so he could call me late at night, you know, for a booty call or whatever. Like, I'm not doing that. I'm staying out. So I went, I no, decided no. she could, right? I was like, no, <laughs> I'm not doing that. Um, so I don't want him to think I'm at home and I didn't have anything to do. So um, I went, I decided to go to this club where there was a band that I had seen before. I liked their music. I was going to go dance. So I went to this club and they weren't there, but the, the security guard said, uh, oh, they're at this other club. This is where they're at if you want to see them. And I was like, okay, great. I'll, I'll go check them out. So I got there, you know, I was jumping. I liked the music. So I sat mm -hmm. at the bar with the old guys, right? I, I love people. Hey. I don't judge. The old guys are going to buy you drinks. You chat them up. It's nice. It's chill. Mm -hmm. Like you don't got to worry. Right. So I'm sitting with the old guys have, just having a great time. Mm -hmm. And I see Anthony walk in and Anthony is just big energy. He's crazy mm -hmm. handsome. He's uh -huh. tall. I saw him walk in. Them girls went nuts. They were flipping their hair, looking around. And I was like, <laughs> I've seen, I've seen this guy. I'm gonna go talk uh -huh. to him. So he oh. walks in. Okay. Yeah, I was like, I've I've seen him before because I had seen him out at other clubs because Anthony ran security at two clubs in Fresno, California. So I had okay. seen him even when I was even when I was married to my ex husband. I saw him. I saw you him saw. twice. Okay. Yeah. So I saw him okay. at that club. So I get to the club. I see him walk in, and I just wanted to ask him a question. So I walked up to him mm -hmm. and I said, "Hey." And he and he's Anthony's super cool. He was like, mm -hmm. hey. And I was like, I've seen you before. I know you before. You one time you were talking to my one time you were talking to my sister. Mm -hmm. And he was, he just kind of looked confused. And I was like, Did you ever call her? And he said, Who's your sister? And I mm -hmm. said, her name's Danielle. I said, her name's Danielle. And he's he like, you know, she's shorter than you. And I was like, Yeah, I'm the tall one. And then he was like, No, nah, I never called her. And I was like, What? Why you didn't call, someone, call my sister? So I was getting all defensive, want to fight him for my sister. And then he was like, she's not my type. And I was like, oh, well, what's your type? And he went like this. He was so cool. He was like, yeah. you, you're my type. And I froze. I was like, yeah. I didn't know what yeah. to say. Because remember, I had been in relationships since I was 14. I wasn't really great at dating. I didn't know what I was doing. Right. So... He, I just kind of froze. And then I was like, what do I say? What do I say? What do guys say? I was like, they always offer to buy a drink. So I was like, oh, um, could I buy you a drink? And he just got this big smile on his face. And he was like, yeah, yeah, they, yeah you can. Okay. And girl, I didn't have no money. I'm offering this man a drink. I didn't have any money. I was a wow. single mom, single Stop. mom. 
Uh, but yes, you know, when yes, in the nineties, yes. in the nineties, you're a woman, you go out, you don't got to worry about having any money and there's no mm -hmm. ATM cards and all of this stuff we have today. So right. I was literally, I went to the bar, I ordered this drink and I'm digging in my purse for dollars. Oh, I'm even counting stop. my quarters no. to pay for this drink. No. But the, okay. the, okay. um, the bartender oh. knew me. And said, okay. I got you, Melanie. Don't worry about it. I had some of it. Mm -hmm. I didn't have all of it. So I got right. the drinks. We sat down and we just started talking about spirituality, the mind, energy, because those mm -hmm. are all the things that I had been studying and I was passionate about. And he had recently gotten divorced and he was on the same journey. He was doing self-work. He was reading a lot. He was okay. meditating okay. and he was interested in energy and the mind. So like we just connected immediately on that. Thank goodness he had money. Then he bought all the drinks after that. And, <laughs> and then I told him later, like, I didn't have any money. I had to like ask for help for that drink. He was like, he was like, uh -huh, the uh -huh. fact he, he said to me, he said, the fact that you offered it to me just made you a standout. He was like, no woman had ever offered to buy me a drink. And I was like, I had never offered it to buy anyone a drink before. <laughs> and he was like, you just, he said, you just came and you were bold and you had big energy. And I like that. He goes, cause I'm bold. And I'm thinking my woman's got to be bold like me. And so mm -hmm. he really liked mm -hmm. that. I bought him a mm -hmm. drink. We had a great time and um, this part is interesting. So then after the club, mm -hmm. he's like, do you want to go have breakfast? I was like, sure. But you know, in those yeah. days, we didn't want to eat in front of men. So I didn't order anything. I was like, I'm not hungry. I'll just have coffee. And I had mm -hmm. my coffee. So he ordered his food to go since I wasn't eating. So we had coffee okay. and uh, then his food comes and, he's, mm -hmm. and he looks at me. He pulled the Billy D uh, line on me. He looked at me and stood up and he said, I'm going home. You coming? And I was like, mm. and and I know you said no. I'm going home. I, I did I'm it. Just, I, no, oh, I did okay. it. Okay. <laughs> said I'm a grown woman with two children. This uh -huh, man is uh -huh. fine. And, uh -huh. uh, Full of itself. It, uh -huh. it is what it is, right? Okay. So okay. I said, I got to call my roommate and tell her who I'm with. I got to be safe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I literally thought, I'm be honest. I literally thought this is just going to be a one night stand. He's really hot. Remember I'm 26, 26 I, years old. I, so it was about I, I, the hotness. Yes. So yes, of course. Uh, I went back to his place. We had some fun. It was amazing. Uh -huh. And then I was trying to go. My makeup was coming off. I was like, I got to go. I was trying to hide my face. And then he's like, well, wait, 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 where are you, where are you going? And I was like, well, you know, it's late. I should go. And then mm -hmm. he was like, would you please, would you stay? Would you stay? And I'd like to cuddle with you. And I was like, I read the rules and we're not supposed to be doing this, but okay, it's late. So I stayed. And then again, in the morning I got up and I was like, I'm trying to get out of here, get my stuff and go. And he, hey, 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 hey. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, um, I'd like to take you out on a date. I like you oh. a lot. Oh. Can, I have your, can I have your phone number? Mm -hmm. And I, I was like, sure. So I gave him my phone number. I wrote it on his breakfast container. And um, he asked me the same day. He's like, can you come watch me play basketball? And um, I said, I have to go pick up my kids. You know, I, it's... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's Saturday. I've got to get my kids and spend the day with my kids. And he's like, you could bring the kids to the basketball game. And I was like, uh, no, I just met you. I don't bring my children around people I just meet. So yeah, I'm not going to bring my kids to a basketball game, but you can call me for a date if you'd like. And um, he called me that day when I got home. My roommate was like, that guy, a guy called with a Brooklyn accent for you. And I was like, he did already? And mm -hmm. uh, he called me and asked me on a date and took me on a very lovely proper date and said to me, like, I'm not trying to fall in love. I just came out of a divorce. I got really hurt. I was like, me too. And so he was like, but I like you. I want to hang out with you. Is that cool? And I was like, yeah, that's fine. Girl, we've been together every day since. Every day since. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it just developed into 
this really beautiful friendship. Anthony is my best friend. We love all the same things. Um, yeah. And we just always wanted the same kind of life. Like we started talking about what we wanted in the future. We wanted the same things. And so life just unfolded and he ended up being the love of my life. And I thought he was a booty call. Who knew? <laughs> now, how many years from that? Mm hmm. You till now, down in mm -hmm. you well till you uh, settled down. Oh, till we got married. Till we got mm -hmm. married. We were together for ten years before we got married. It was, yeah, it was a journey. Yeah. yeah, it was. It was definitely a journey. We had some issues with. Um, Anthony had a problem being a stepdad because he didn't have any children at the time, and he was young and hot and wanted to be a musician. He had all these big dreams, so the idea of settling down and raising somebody else's kids was not at the top of his list. So he struggled with that mm -hmm. a little bit, but I am a mama through and through and through my children are the loves of my life. So it was yeah. like, if you're going to be with me, you're going to end up dealing mm -hmm. with my children because they're my children and I, I adore them. And so he just said to me one day, Anthony's really good at dealing with, um, conflict with stress with hard conversations he just said to me one day he said i really love you and i feel like i'm gonna outgrow this they're gonna outgrow their issues with me my daughter loved him immediately she was seven or mm -hmm. eight and my son was little he was a baby he was like three and, and he did not like anthony in the beginning he was like no don't touch my mama and mm -hmm. he was really mm -hmm. loyal to his dad so he did not mm -hmm. he gave anthony a, a run for his money so that's a little yeah. bit more of the issue but time took care of it all worked it out uh matter of fact anthony just went to the gym right now to go work out with him at the gym so they're tighter than <laughs> ever it just yeah. took some growth right you you can't just mm -hmm. Sometimes we think if you love someone, you're just going to automatically love their children. And mm -hmm. that isn't always the case. Sometimes it takes time. You have to get to know them. You have to learn about them. It would be a great world if we could say, yeah, I just automatically love this person because they're with you. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't work mm -hmm. out like that. Sometimes we don't even like our family or want to love our family. So how we expect people to love our kids when they're not their kids and, and they don't really know them. But time and spending time together really worked that out for us and now they're all really close and i love that oh and then we ended up having a baby together so um i was by the time i was in my 30s anthony started saying because part of anthony's story is he was married before and his ex-wife had twin boys but he found out that they weren't his so he had the opportunity to be a parent, but then found out they were not his children and she got remarried. And so that ended for him. So he came to a place where he really wanted children, but I mm -hmm. really wanted to be a career woman and my children were already growing up. And so right. he said, I really want a baby. And I was like, oh, okay, I will have one more baby, but you are going to have to be a really good co-parent and really be involved because I'm not giving up my career to have another mm -hmm. baby. And he said, I will do, I'll do everything for the baby. I'll do everything. You, you can work. You just work, do what you want to do. I'm going to take care of the baby. I was like, okay. And then I tried to get out of it. I tried to give him a time limit. So I said, <laughs> I will only have a baby up to 33. And after I turn 33, I'm not I'm not trying anymore. That's going to be okay. it. And he, uh -huh. and he said, okay, okay, okay. Do you know, I found out I was pregnant two days after my 33rd birthday. Okay. Okay. <laughs> he, he, he met the deadline. He met the deadline. So um, we ended up having our amazing, beautiful daughter, Tony. Uh, Tony mm -hmm. was born on Christmas day. I went into labor oh. on Christmas Eve and had her Christmas morning. So we always say she's our Christmas gift. And Isn't she that? really is a gift to our family because something interesting happened. When we had Tony, it was like it bonded the whole family together because now it wasn't mm -hmm. my children and him. Right. right. It was their sister and him and all of us became a family. And so he even said himself, he was like, once we had Tony, I felt like I was part of the family. Before that, I always kind of felt like an outsider, like you and your kids were a family. And I was, I was your boyfriend. 
basically. Mm -hmm. And then after we um, had Tony, then he felt really connected to the entire family and our family just grew an amazing way. And then one of the reasons we got married, we, we kind of considered ourselves rebels back then because we were really mm -hmm. bucking the system. We were really feeling like everything we've been taught traditionally is not working. So we want to try things a little bit different. So I wasn't in a hurry to get married and he wasn't in a hurry to get married. We had done that. And so mm -hmm. we were like, we just want to make sure it's right. So what happened, I think my daughter was two or three and she said one day, mommy, how come you have a different last name than daddy and me? And she mm -hmm. was the one who noticed it and she kept asking. And then finally he was like, I think it's time we, we take care of this. And so I was like, mm -hmm. we'll get to it. We'll get to it. And then he ended up proposing and then we ended up getting married, but we felt like we were married for the whole 10 years. Like our, our mm -hmm. love for each other mm -hmm. is extremely unconditional. It's, it's not, I, I don't feel like it fits in the confines of what we're supposed to do. It's really a precious gift um, from the universe and we treat it that way. So for 10 years, we were not married um, and we've been together 30 years. So, and it might even be over 30 years. I don't ever count the time. Anthony says wow. one number, I say another number. Yeah, I just beautiful. know we've been together forever. Yes. Now on Black Love, that's when I found uh -huh. out who, who you all were and your yeah. story. And it was like one, um, there were several different episodes mm -hmm. that you all, you all had a part, bits and pieces of your story on it. Yes. And I, every time your story would come up, I bust a gut because <laughs> I thought these two, not only did I think that you two were so much in love, uh -huh. but your personalities, both of you to me have two strong personalities. Yes, we do. And either you were going to either, in my opinion, you were either going to love each other or kill each other. Yeah. And as you went on the journey, the stories, I, I just, I mean, I was losing it. I, I, I just felt like I just got to know these people. <laughs> <laughs>